Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mind Body TV. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo, and I have a very special guest I'll introduce in just a moment. I know we have a lot of new members in the community. I'm so excited. This is growing. So many more people are interested in activating that innate ability to heal, being connected within. So I'm really excited to have you. I'd love to hear where you're tuning in from in the world. We have a worldwide community, and um, it's great to just be connected in this this expansion in consciousness. I created Mind Body TV because as a physician, I have experienced how essential it is that we are here present in the body and how much our frequency and vibration affects our physical and that all of the things going on in your physiology and your brain and your nervous system, your immune system is really guided by and dictated by your consciousness. So to begin to shift what's happening in your physical whether it's a physical illness or something going on in your body or your life and your circumstances, you really got to change who you are being in here, get here now in the body and make those shifts and changes. And Mind Body TV is a really great way to begin to do that. So I'm at drkimd.com for those who are new to subscribe to begin a Mind Body program. And I'm glad you're here for Mind Body TV because this week I have my partner, my husband, Dr. Mario Torres Leone, to share about some new work he's created in the world. Mario and I have been married for about 13 years and we've really come to see that like in a partnership as one person is growing and expanding they're either an invitation for that other person to also grow and expand in partnership or they're like a pressure or um, like a burden of like come on why aren't you doing this I've seen so many people in my community say my husband really needs this. I should buy him your book and like buy the guy the book. But it's not necessarily received because it's pressure. And we've seen firsthand in our relationship where we're in old patterns, uh, like 1950s programming that we got versus truly being conscious partners. And he has been working with men specifically who have women who are awakening, ascending, um, being interested in like consciously manifesting their life, but then they're like leaving their partners behind. They don't know how to invite them into the equation in a way that really works. So I have Mario on today to talk about this for the men out there or for the women out there who love men to begin to function in conscious partners partnership where we both grow. And I'm super excited to have my partner, my husband, Mario, to be here today. Hello. 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 So awesome to be here with you, Kim. And uh, I, I such a privilege to, to be with your community today. So thank you for the honor of inviting me to uh, share some thoughts and insights with your with your community. Well, we'd love to hear where everyone is tuning in from. As you join us, please type in, uh, are you new to the community? Have you been tuning in for a while? And Mara, why don't you start with like what you've seen is the major issue men and women are having with truly connecting as partners and being in a conscious relationship versus like a under the table unconscious agreements that kind of muck everything up. You know, that's a great question. You said something that is really poignant to this conversation. And, and I know that you have both men and women that are in your community. So this is actually perfect for that. One of the things that you mentioned is this 50, you know, this programming from the 50s. And I will add to that, that the programming for men is even older than that. You see, one of the biggest disconnects that I have found over 25 years of really paying attention to this. And all of that got to a critical climax during our marriage because it comes to a point where this connect gets to to some level where simply it is very dysfunctional to be able to relate particularly with the kind of woman that you were talking about that woman who has been on that evolution path ascension path she's a seeker she's been looking to really get more into her spirituality her growth her development and men we don't really gravitate in that same direction so that to begin with is a bit of a complicated subject the other aspect is if we go back hundreds of thousands of years, by best of accounts, they say that human beings, the homo sapiens, sapiens as we know ourselves to be, we've been roaming around for at least 300,000 300, years. 
Well, if we take that timeline and we dive into what is it that we have been doing as men during that time, well, for the most part, we would leave the women behind in the villages and you had your own social group and the social nucleus and you would take care of each other in a particular way. Us men, on the other hand, we would be out in the wild, we would be hunting, gathering, and really taking care of doing that piece for the tribe. But the extent of the connection that we could have on the field was very, very different from the one that women were experiencing back in the village. So we didn't really get the opportunity historically, we really look at the timeline of, of humans, to have the opportunity to develop ourse ourselves as men emotionally in the same way as women. And not only that, when I talk about the emotional development, I'm also referring to the fact that there is, there has to be, and there is a language that is essential for us to be able to communicate with women and it's the language of emotions. So that huge critical gap, I believe after so many years of going through courses myself, going through therapy, going through different DIY courses, reading books, going to retreats with you in particular over the past 13 plus years of being together, I have always come out of that feeling partially full, in some cases empty, very often feeling as though I have not been understood by the people giving the retreats or the experiences. And why is that? There is a kind of man which I identify myself with, which is the leader, the alpha male, the independent thinker, the guy who's a go-getter, a guy who's a successful man in his own right by his own definition. And what happens is we as men that are defined by those things that I just said, we may be experiencing tremendous levels of success in many domains of our lives. And then we go to the nest. We go to have that experience with my intimate partner, whether I'm married, I'm a guy who's dating somebody else. And what happens? If that woman is a woman that you have in this community, Kim, and she has this guy who is not really meeting himself, which is a really important distinction that we need to make in this, in this uh, program, she will experience tremendous degree of void. She will feel deflated in many instances. And that starts to create a, a diverging sort of path between the common elements that brought them together to begin with. And I have seen this over and over and over again. So a starting point, which I talk about when I created the Alive Partner course, is we as men, and this is completely applicable to women, we have to cater to upgrading what I call the POS, which is our personal operating system. You see, let's say that all the people who are right now on the call, if you think about what was your last thing that you did for your own education, let's say that you went to high school and you graduated and now you're 50 years old. Well, if you graduated at the age of 18, that means that for the past 32 years, there really hasn't been any upgrades in that personal operating system. If you went to college, we'll do the math and the same thing. Most people walking around, we basically stop that process of upgrading ourselves the moment that we stop that education. But when we transfer that particular deficiency in our growth and we place it in this setting where let's say the woman has been on a path of expansion, growing, developing, investing energy, time and resources to be able to expand and grow, but the men for whatever the particulars are may not be doing that or has not done that. Now you're going to have another element that increases the degree of separation. So we've talked about the lack of having an emotional language. Now, secondly, we've talked about not having a personal operating system upgrade. Only if you would take just to take those two things only, I can tell you that that would create a tremendous degree of disharmony. And then what happens is exactly what you're alluding to earlier you were saying, well, this woman is now starting to feel unmet, that breeds resentment. And then she starts to come at the man in her mind and her soul, trying to do the best she can to bring him along so they can continue to grow together, have these experiences. So there's no male intention as far as I'm concerned in the woman wanting to do that. But unfortunately, the man is not receptive to that kind of uh, request. And very often, it doesn't land as a request for the man. It actually lands as criticism. And then there's another aspect to this, which actually makes things even harder for the woman in particular. This kind of man that I'm describing, which I can completely identify with, we do not, and this applies to most men, 
who do not like to be told by the woman in this case, and that may be coming across as chauvinistic. I don't want to be told what to do. I don't want to be told that I'm deficient. I don't want to be told anything that in any way is going to strike a chord for me of inadequacy, make me feel embarrassed, make me feel I'm completely ashamed of myself because I cannot rise to the occasion and meet the expectations of my woman. You see, it's very important to understand for the audience, men in, in the core essence of who we are, I really believe after so many years of seeing this, studying this and going through it myself for decades, we're very simple. And when it comes to our relationship, what we really are using as means of defining the quality and the success of this relationship is how much I'm taking care of you and what kind of feedback am I getting from my woman as to how she's feeling with the degree of care that I'm actually extending to her. This is really important. But the woman in her mind and in her experience of what she wants to be fulfilled and expand, it's not just give me things that are objects. You know, it's not like buy me this, buy me that, uh, do the dishes tonight. Yeah, those are things that are great. But ultimately, this woman that we're talking about now in the 21st century who has been in this path of expansion has very different needs that if they're not being met and if she doesn't know how to ask for them, it's only going to create tremendous disharmony. And, and those requirements or needs that she's having is that she wants that man to be fully present, to be fully embodied, to be showing up for her. And when I say showing up for her, is a man who is truly connected with the essence of what is he feeling. You see? But now, if we go back to what I just said in the beginning, and I said that there has been a tremendous uh, you know, dichotomy, if you will, in men and women when it comes to expressing our emotions and our feelings, well, and now we fast forward that to this very conversation, we're going to understand that no matter how much the man wants to actually meet the woman and he is devoted to giving her whatever she wants. He's devoted to being able to meet her. He's devoted to love her unconditionally, loyally. Yes, that's all phenomenal. But the thing is that her experience of him is not going to be met. And the reason why that's not going to be met is because there's a huge critical gap in between which is the foundation of being able to start creating a deeper connection. And that foundational piece is how that man, number one, starts to understand that he's a feeling being. And this notion, even though he's an alpha guy, he's a leader guy, he's taking care of people, he's succeeding outside and so on. That alpha guy has a very, very deeply running feeling essence that we have completely dampened and suppressed, and we have not known, even if we understand and realize that there is a problem, we have not been able to discover what is the freaking missing link. You see, and, and this is something that I have struggled with, and I struggled with for decades, and I've considered myself somebody to be a fairly decent communicator, but why was that missing, as I, let's say, dealt with you in our marriage, right? Why is it that we don't have that? And I think that all the elements that I've been laying down here really cater to explaining why that is. The moment that I discovered that piece, I said, hold on. And this happened many years ago in the beginning of our marriage. And I discovered a way to have a language, to have a methodology, a framework to be able to start assigning emotions and feelings, words, so that the space in between, the physical space between the man and the woman could be filled with something that as I, as I was emitting that message and you were receiving it on the other end, there could be a common ground to be able to create connection and elevate the way that we connected with one another. And to this day, and this is something that I talk about in the course, I mean, we have spent together and independent of each other, deep in the six figures, going to courses, going to experiences, reading books and so on. And, and like I said, I would come out feeling completely incomplete. And I said, there's got to be a way to put this all together that makes sense. And particularly for the men in the community that do not like to do courses, that don't like to be told you have to do this, you have to do that. 
And that basically gave birth to the creation of a life partner and, and the course itself. You know, I want you to speak to this. Heidi's asking, how do we invite our partners to join us? So she says, I see how sh I shut myself away from my partner as a result of what Mario's talking about. My, my add to this is, um, before we've really done this deep opening work, like there was so much in me as a more omega feminine woman that was like old pains and resentments and hurts, not just like related to you, which would have been enough for <laughs> volumes in our short time together, but like my past with my dad or men or traumas or like in this lifetime or beyond that this, you know, a person is carrying that we've shut ourselves down to like the world's not that safe for me to fully open to my emotions, but in the partnership we're in, it's like, it requires that I'm fully sensing the moment. That's really what the value is that I bring. And so to be like a sensing woman open to my own pain, my own fear, my own resentment really required like a safe space, non-judgment, like the grounding presence of the alpha masculine energy um, before that was even going to be conscious to me, let alone something I'm actively sharing with my partner. So how does a woman who wants to go deeper and have that connection with the man of like true intimacy, see into me, um, true authentic connection, communion, love, um, invite the partner into that kind of dynamic? That is such a great question because it's at the crux of everything. And and I want to say for all the women who are witnessing this conversation right now, conceptually, the Alive Partner platform and, and the course has been geared towards men. But honestly, if you really pay attention to it and you do it, you realize we're talking about human beings. Because what has happened with many of the women, Kim, that have gone through the Alive Partner course before becoming a, a life program starting today is the fact that they realized that they had no notion of how the, the heart and the brain of the man works when it pertains to these matters. And that has completely changed the experience of the woman, of herself, as she relates to the dilemma of how to relate to the man to actually get him to meet her as he meets himself. Okay? And I'm going to unpack that a little bit more. So many of these women in the community is like, they're trying to pull the man. I want him to do this. I want him to follow me, this and that. Yeah. And they'll complain like, oh, he doesn't get this or he doesn't get. And I saw that in myself for a long time. Like it was a complaint more than feeling like I had a resource of a, of a something I could do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to speak about two areas that are incredibly powerful in, in this journey of the Alive Partner and in my discoveries on this. Uh, number one is the fact that if that woman is not understanding what are the drivers of the man, she will never be able to understand why is it that while she's actually asking for him opening to her and being a recipient, a still recipient of witnessing her as she's emoting and going through her emotional experience, he is never going to be able to give her what she needs. That's number one. So for all the women that feel unmet in this call right now, my husband does not get me. I am on the verge of like divorcing this guy because this guy is completely a nitwit. He's a moron. He doesn't understand me emotionally. And I know that you think this way. It's, 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 I've seen it over and over again, right? The first thing that we need to understand, and this will change your perspective of the guy as of right now, is the following. The man in his alpha nature... He wants to take care of things and he is a fixer. So the moment that a woman is needing dramatically to have him meet her where she's at emotionally without him having had the practice of understanding what to be a container for her is, is never going to work because as she's here saying all these things, what am I thinking? Oh my gosh, I am failing. This woman is not happy. What can I do for you? Honey, I'm right here. Tell me what can I do so that you feel better? And that immediately, what does it do? It puts more fuel on her fire. 
more fuel. Why? Because she doesn't want to be fixed. What she wants to do is just to be able to be received, to be able to be experienced, and to have a man in her life who she calls her partner who can actually witness her and allow her to gift all the spectrum of colors that she has in her emotional and spiritual evolution to gift it to him. If he is not capable of holding that space and understanding that there's nothing to fix in this moment, and I'm not just going to stand there, okay, let her just have her crazy moment. She's being hormonal. All women are crazy. I don't subscribe to any of that as an alive partner member. Why? Because I have come to understand that the biggest gifts that that man can receive from her woman start to unfold the moment that he can actually witness, experience her, and be completely with himself and what's coming up for him as he's actually seeing her. So can we go back to like, what would she do to ask for that? What can she do to invite that? Yes, that's a great question. Very often when discussions and arguments and difficult situations come up, there is no, there's no, there hasn't been the creation of a condition to be able to have those moments. Yeah, I'm like Heidi's saying to be received and not fixed, to feel held in my wholeness and what I need in this moment, that would be so amazing. That's exactly so right. how, What would she do to invite that? One of the things that is important for women to start practicing, and I guarantee you it may seem like a lot of effort, and I go in detail in the course about this, even though it's for men, I talk about this. That's why women have liked the course. When the woman actually approaches the man and lets him know, hey, you know, I want to start doing something that we really haven't practiced before when we're having tough conversations and tough moments. And I may not be able to always practice perfectly, but I am committed from now on to do it in this way. And she explains to the man the following. When I am going to be sharing something with you, I would really appreciate and it would honor me if you can just witness what I'm going to share and don't say anything in this moment. Don't try to change the course of the conversation. Do everything you can, even if you feel very uncomfortable and if you feel I'm attacking you, which is not my intention. Do your best as just witnessing me, looking at me, holding the space for me. And if he doesn't understand the word hold space, all she can say is just listen to me. Just please listen to me with all the compassion you can muster in your heart in this moment. That's all I'm going to ask. Please allow me to have that. The moment that the woman, for the first time, even if it's 5, 10, 15, 20 years in the marriage, experiences that that man was able to show up for her in such a way after she requested that kindly before the event even happened. That conversation might have been had one week, two weeks before something really erupted, but the stage was set for that. And she can remind him. The moment that she experiences that this man is staying right there with her. He is in a state of allowance, which we call equanimity. That is going to create a very different experience of herself, almost to the point of having an orgasm in her body from a spiritual sense, because it's so new. It's like, oh my gosh, he had never done that before. Never, never. And and what does that do? She will be able to radiate a state, of appreci- a, a state of appreciation and she will hold that man in a very different category because now he's been able to display something that she thought he was incapable of actually offering to the space, right? It may, it, it may come to a point that that woman just bursts out into tears. The stillness that the man offered for the first time without him knowing what he was doing to her, maybe so of such extent and such greatness that she may just lean onto him and start crying on top of him and hug and kiss him and say, how amazing you are. How do we know that? Because I've experienced that in my marriage, in my relationship. And in the beginning, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so great. Look what I did. You know, this woman is melting down here for me. And after I went through my ego phase of understanding, hold on, no, this is not for her. She is gifting me the opportunity to have this moment 
of her manifesting her entire spectrum of colors and her emotions and her spiritual experience for me to actually to be able to be gifted with those tools to witness what's coming up for me. What am I feeling? You see, when the woman is having that experience and he is, let's say I'm the one holding that space for the first time in stillness. I am being given a tremendous gift to start tuning in into what I have never been taught by my father, by my grandfather, and by generations before of starting to wake up the feeling body. You see, the women in your community and the men as well are very used to be talking about this things, Kim. They're used to. The majority of men, 99.999% of the men who are out there in the world don't really know how to do this. And it's not because of lack of desire. You see, you were asking, what else can we tell these women to really start getting the men to do that? Well, as, as you talk in, in this community all the time, what is your BS? What is your belief system about this? If you start off from the premise and you recognize that your man is as much as a feeling being as you are as a woman, and the only thing that is keeping you apart from that is being able to have him have the experience of waking up the feeling body, what's coming up for him? Well, now every time that we are in this situation where you as a woman are expressing everything that is coming up for you, what is he going to do? Well, being a container for you is not just like, I'm going to be just a great listener. No. The next step for that guy is going to be, he's going to start tuning in. What's coming up for me? Because one of the reasons your man is not listening to you the way you want to, or you're not experiencing him as a compassionate being, or you're not experiencing him as, as an expanded, spiritual, developed guy, is the fact that he hasn't known how to do that. And he hasn't known what to do with the discomfort that we men experience when we witness our women go through a really tough emotional or spiritual moment. And the more comfort that I start to experience within myself, as I have the honor, the privilege to witness the woman be revealed to me in her emotional essence, the more connection I feel with myself as a man and the more I can actually offer myself to her in those moments. And what does that do for him? Well, in, in her eyes, this man has grown. And now the elements of distrust, the elements of unsafety that so many women experience, they start to dissolve. Because consistently now, he has been learning to connect with himself. So ultimately now he can start gifting himself to her and create that special container of safety and security that is one of the elements that the omega side of women is seeking and fuels her emotional and spiritual tank to be able to continue to come together with him. Is that making sense? Yeah, what I wanna uh, just go back to is when you said, you know, if the man asking him, here's what I actually really need from you and then letting him deliver that is so powerful because what women want, like Heidi shared so well, is like to be held in my wholeness in that space of need and really like received. So so as a like more omega feminine woman, you're either going to be in your like feeling, sensing, connected, sensual self, or you're going to shut that down. And, you know, being a mother, like having these kids and like having a business, <laughs> having all this like richness of life, there's a lot of like to do and management. And so then I'm either going to be in my all business. Hey, who's picking Gemma? up? Who's doing this? Hey, what about our trip here? What about dinner with so-and-so like facts and events. And then we have this like alpha alpha relationship, which is great for getting stuff done, but like ultimately sucks. Or I'm in my Omega and I'm sensing and I'm feeling and I'm, feeling the moment, but then like, I really need a non-judgmental space to express that, right? Otherwise it's like, no, you, you're not going to do that. You've got to just stay shut down. And it, it's horrible living that way because what I have always felt you wanted from me was like the softness, tenderness, but then it's like, I'm banging in and out of this, you know, management shut down. I can get so much done 
But if I go back into like feeling the moment, it is so painful. Like, so the kid is like throwing their food at you that you just spent 15 minutes making, or you're, um, you know, you got to get on that meeting, but you're with the family doing other things. And then it's like really painful to feel the moment and not have an outlet of expression. And so when I've had uh, moments with you where I'm like crying for no reason or like having an upheaval of such intense emotion around something that might just seem minor, like, yeah, he doesn't want to eat his eggs. What's the big deal? Make some oatmeal. It's like, no, it's the moment of, I am, it's so overwhelming and it's so disappointing. And it's so like, there's everything in the moment. There's joy. There's like this fascination with life. And then there's also like, oh, I'm feeling so much um, pain or overwhelm or whatever it may be. If you don't have an outlet for that, it's like, you might as well just shut it down. And so to have a moment where I'm just like crying for no reason, because the richness of life is so intense. And then just let that all out. And you're like, oh, I gotcha. No questions asked. No, like, what the hell is going on here? No, I need you to explain this to me, please, because I'm very uncomfortable with it. Or like, let's get you feeling better so this isn't such a mess anymore. Like, none of that. It's just, that's going to be as long as it's, it's there. And then it's like, oh, I'm good. And I'm like 10 out of 10, 20 out of 10, because not only was it a catharsis, I can stay open and I've like really received something from you to be in the moment without judgment and without leaving it. Like you're actually present versus like, Oh boy, come on. I got to get on to the next thing, but yeah, yeah. I'm here for you. You're yeah. actually here is so healing, so rejuvenating and so like awakening and like lets my system stay open for the next moment. Yeah, and I want to say to add to that, that was beautiful. There is a big misconception about men that I am so committed through my through my work to be able to evolve it and and allow people to consider it differently, especially men. And it's this aspect that we don't have emotions running as deep as women's do. That is so not true. You see. The issue is that we haven't known how to channel it. And that's one of the reasons why there's so much lung cancer, heart disease, prostate cancer, no question, right in your pelvic chakras, right? There's so much energy pent up in men, not because we can't communicate. And I'll give you a very clear, concise example of how this is not true. When I started to coach men, it's very interesting. In the beginning, let's say that we do a check-in to see how the week was you know, before we met again. And, oh, you know, in the beginning of, of the journey of, of coaching them, you know, they'll be like, oh, you know, I had a good week, you know, work was busy, it was stressful, this and that, you know, the relationship, oh, things are okay, this and that. Boom. And that's the extent of the check-in. When we have worked and, and we do it, in, you know, immediately upon starting to work in the mentorship, we start really digging into unleashing and waking up the feeling body. And all the women that are listening to this are going to laugh because, you know, it, it is said that women are the ones that are always talking and this and that, and they're so emotionally insane so much. Listen, you got nothing on guys when they start opening up because then suddenly half an hour of the coaching call goes and the guy is still talking about what he's been feeling and the experiences. And it proves the point. Emotions, feelings in men run extremely deep as well. And that for any woman out there who's been feeling really challenged with being in a relationship where she experiences, not that he is, experiences a man as shut down, checked out, he doesn't feel, he doesn't get me. If you start considering and, and being the knowing that emotions in that individual run so deep and he is completely clueless about how to offer that to you. Yeah, I think all women have been in relationships like that, where you actually just think, oh, he just, there's nothing in there. He's just not very deep. And it's the man's level of disconnection with himself that's, that's happening, but you can either be an invitation to have him be more connected with himself it will happen automatically in his energy system or you're in your hardness and complaint which is actually going to make him more disconnected yes and i and i also want to add to that you're a hundred percent spot on kim um 
another aspect that adds to that element is when women, like the beautiful women in this community, have been in their process of expanding, doing programs, for example, like the ones that you offer and so on, which I'm so grateful they exist because in women expanding, they can really lead us to be able to follow some of that until we start to discover ourselves and be able to grow alongside with them to be able to offer to them. But the thing is, for the man, this alpha guy that I'm talking about, it doesn't land very well to be next to a woman that, that is in on this path and she seems to have all the answers to everything and he has zero answers. What happens? That creates a tremendous sense of resentment to the point that the woman is like, hey, I came across this book. It's amazing. You have to read it. And he's like, hell no, I'm not doing that. Okay, well, she's like, okay, well, she didn't like that. Let me see. And then she comes across a course. Oh my gosh, and I found now the embracing, uh, he, you know, embracing health coach with Dr. Kim or the Mind Your Body program. You have to do this. And it may be the best thing since sliced bread. I think they are. But then the guy's like, hell no. Why? Because he's he's equating. If I do any of that, it's like I'm doing it for her. She's over there. It lands as spiritual and developmental arrogance. It's not an invitation. It's not a partnership. No, because so how do we how do we do that as an invitation? Where I, I know you said back a, a, a bit ago, you've got to tune into his drivers. He wants to please you, and how to give them that win, which actually a lot of women subconsciously don't want to give men the win. You're like, yeah, let me, what, let me watch you fall on your face and show me one more time how justified I am in withholding from you. It's like just old programming versus like, no, I'm on board for us to win. I'm on board for you to have a win with me. Let me make it easy for you, which you've got to be pleasable You've got to take care of your own inner game to be that. Uh, but how do you ask for what you'd like from the man and be that invitation um, to have him participate with you this way? Like, I'll just say for Mario and I, for everyone listening, like we have had a conscious partnership from the beginning. Why are we getting married? What do we want this marriage to be for us? What do we want it to be in the world? Like, what's the point versus like the unconscious? I guess this is the next step. We actually wanted to create it as our own. What does this mean and what does this serve? And we both were vested in having an awesome relationship, a great time, expansion, growth, uh, a relationship that supports us both, nurtures us both, and like investing ourselves to create that, right? Because if you're with somebody who they're like, yeah, I mean, my relationship's fine. I don't see a problem here versus someone who's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm willing to show up and do whatever it takes to make this awesome. That's a different partnership. So I think getting on the same page with that and then, uh, <laughs> what, what can we do? Mary, uh, Lou is saying, I'm going to ask my husband to watch this with me. And we, we did create this to be something um, for men as well as women. In fact, you can go to Mario's page, uh, alivepartner.com forward slash Kim. And I'll put it in the notes here um, for an awesome video of like the three things um, a man can do right now to activate that um, connection with the woman and have her wanting more. And this is definitely something Mario has lived that has rocked my world is his presence is here with me in his body versus like in his head. And, and if you just do that one thing, that is a game changer. Uh, but let me just get back to that, Mar. Um, mm -hmm. What would you say to the, the woman who wants to be the invitation? Yeah, the programming is going to be something else. Hey, you should do this and let's do that. And I want you to do this, which is all about like, I want to fix you. You're not good enough. Not that you intend that. How can she shift that to be... Uh, that space that's like, ooh, what if we do it this way? You want to play with me? How might this be awesome in a way that activates um, his vested interest? You know, what a great question. And, and I'll just paint a little metaphor for you. What if somebody said to you that, you know, there was going to be a baseball game and you're invited to come, right? So now you've told all your friends and everybody shows up to the baseball park. You show up with a glove and your bat and your ball. And then I, Mario, show up with a basketball. Well, immediately, you're going to be asking, hold on. 
said very clearly that we we're going to be playing baseball today. We're not playing basketball, buddy, right? And very often, that's exactly what happens. And why does that happen? And it speaks to the fact that there is no clarity and intentionality in what is it that we're here to do, right? So now if we fast forward and apply that concept to what's happening to, let's say, let's say, for example, the women in this community that are feeling disconnected with their men, and now you have been in this ascension path and in this you know, state of clarity spiritually, but not with your, with your partner. Well, now every time that you feel annoyed by being unmet, feeling unmet as it pertains to him, it is very unlikely that you're going to come all sweet and tender and, hey, you know, dude, let's No, do you're pissed. Here. You're hard. No way, right? You're going to be like, listen, uh, I'm really upset about this and that. And I think you should really go and do something and help yourself out and find some sort of course or maybe just like, hey, you know, I saw this YouTube video. Go and click it and check it out because I think you really need to take a look at that. No. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And, and to begin with, it, the woman is already upset to begin with. And I am not faulting you. you you're, you're doing everything you can as best as you know, just as he is doing everything he can, if he's a genuine individual, to please you as well and show up in that way. But if you are already knowing that you are more advanced than he is at knowing some of the things that he's not seen for himself, the compassionate partner, if you're interested in the relationship and making it thrive, taking that into account, you are the one who holds the key to unleash him and unlock him. And you have to tend the invitation. And that invitation may sound something like, hey, you know, I found this and I would love to share this with you. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to have you look at it. Let's just check it out. If you've done that already and it doesn't work, I can tell you that there's something that always works. When the woman puts the foot down and says, you know what? I'm not doing it this way anymore. You have to have that clarity in your heart, in your mind, that this is not, is not something that you're willing to participate of. And not out of spite, not out of anger, not out of not appreciating him, just because you have the awareness that that path is not going to lead to where you want to go. And it's not, I, I think it's unconscionable for women to completely resign themselves to their feminine nature, to the women power that is inside of them, to the capacity to be sexually fulfilled beings, to shut down just because there was somebody that they think or they have experienced as incapable of meeting them where they're at. No. If we do that, that is very arrogant. And, is, and if it's a, a really good guy, that he may be clueless, not because he's not capable or he's not smart. We are shutting down the possibilities for you as a woman to be fully expressed. You see, when the man can actually start gifting to you and contributing to you and enhancing you as a woman, the plateaus that you experience in your development, in your spiritual growth, in your expansion, they get blown up into new levels and you go even higher, right? Because you're not carrying all this emotional and spiritual baggage that is attached to the man that you're seeing as simply incapable of giving to you or gifting to himself. You have to change how you see that person. You see them as some like spiritual imbecile. Yes. <laughs> this person's got his head so far up his butt. This person's so arrogant. I, I hear women all the time. They'll say, well, my husband's a narcissist or he's so shut down. Or, and, and you can acknowledge all of that. But what you're seeing is the result of like that partner that shows up in your embodiment of your own closure versus how he would show up if you're open. You have to open first before anything can change in your life, whether it's your body, your health. So what is the opening? Like you're softer, you're automatically more aware of your own emotions. And so that anger of like, oh, he's just blah, 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 becomes an expression of pure emotion, yes. right? So like, ah, oh, versus you should read this book. And I think blah, 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 where you're like holding your emotion in and then you're just like alpha, alpha, <laughs> let's have a communication versus letting him see you. And when we're not willing to feel and embody our own emotions, 
um, we, we're not going to do that. We're going to stay all business. We're going to handle it. We're going to get stuff done. We're going to manage. But to invite like an alpha male power into your life, you've got to go more into your omega. And so that means like it's messy. You're going to feel stuff. You're going to express stuff. You're going to maybe look super unenlightened because you're just like, ah, and you're like, I don't have it all together. But that actually is your greatest moment because it's pure and you're actually allowing an authentic expression, which is deeply healing. And I, and I want to add, Kim, this, that was amazing. I, I want to add two things. One th intimate thing that I'll share with the, the, the community and the audience is the fact that I regard Kim as an unbelievable, super incredibly sensual dancer. Like, amazing. But even though she, Kim, gravitates towards dancing and wanting to do all of that, I have noticed how much impairment she can experience in her natural disposition to be a dancer for me, let's say, when I have not been present to her and what's coming up for me so that she can experience me in my body and present to myself and my experience. So she becomes a boring dancer, let's say. When I am really present to what I'm, what's coming up for me and she can feel me, she becomes this incredibly dancing snake. It's unbelievable. It's that she becomes a dancing goddess. And I give this as an example so that you, the women listening to this, and also the men listening to this, you can have a, a, a very concrete understanding and example of how that degree of presence and embodying that has an impact on the other one. It's, it's just so direct. It's amazing. That's one thing. The other thing that I want to add to this, Kim, which is really remarkable in the Alive Partner course is the following. Many women get really upset for some of the choices that we men make in our professional lives. And it's, it's fascinating to me to see how much the man gets into his creative genius and essence, integrity, honest, honesty, accountability, when he starts to dial in into discovering what's coming up for him and feeling it. You see, so this aspect of this man becoming alive, not only to serve the relationship and serve his woman and be served by the gifts that he can receive through her expansion as he is doing that for her, also spill over into other domains of life. Yeah, yeah, so that's important to remember. Very important. So. So all those men that may be feeling stuck in their professional lives and all of this stuff, very often, if we actually take a closer look into if they're feeling men or not, we realize that there is a tremendous shutdown of their feeling body. When we start to access that, and I, I, have, I have experienced that in my own life for sure many times, when I start tuning in, it's not like what I call the SOS, the shiny object syndrome. And then you're chasing different things, thinking that's the best new deal that you're going to do as an entrepreneur, or as a business guy. You start tuning in. And what does that do for the woman when she experiences the guy who's actually starting to get focused, start to get direction, start to sense that there's grounding? Well, when that happens, she, by, by reciprocity of what she's witnessing and experiencing from him, she starts to get a greater sense of security in the relationship, she starts to get a greater sense of admiration and respect for the man, the integrity, the accountability, the showing up for himself and his, the decisions that he's actually, you know, putting out in the world. And seeing the results, she witnessing the results, that creates a tremendous sense of awe and inspiration. Like, wow, how hot and attractive is it to be with a man who is firm with his feet on the ground? That is tremendously powerful because it allows a woman to get from the get away from the alpha state she's been in, dealing with this guy to protect herself, which leads to having two CEOs under the same roof. It doesn't work. The corporation cannot run well with two CEOs under the same roof. Now she can relax into that experience. She can relax and allow to be taken care of. She can relax and allow him to take care of of her and that allows him to be in his alpha essence in his 
male essence, like I am taking care of my woman. I am pleasing my woman. I am right there for her. Nothing is missing for her. And we go into all of this in tremendous detail, as you can imagine, in the Alive Partner course. Like I said, it's been years and years of not seeing why is it that we have not had anything like this for men and also for the women who want to get to know their men better and how to relate with them. It, it's been just incredible. Hmm. All right. Well, let's just complete here. I want to see if people have questions. I know this is resonating with a lot of people. Um, thank you, Bernadette. Bernadette Logue. Beautiful, amazing woman. She's a spiritual coach. She's a really good friend of ours. She's actually loved this work as well. In fact, Bernadette had said, as a woman viewing this course that's intended for men, I understood my husband more. And she kind of brought out these five core aspects of an alive partner. And one of these that's in the program um, is like that presence is this man embodying so much presence that you can fully let go with him. A lot of the relationship challenges people have is like, nobody's letting go. There is no surrender. It's like everybody's holding on, directing, like you said, two CEOs. Uh, and Bernadette's a person who's really so powerful in the world, but like also in a committed relationship. And she wants that to be passionate and amazing, not like all business. So um, she has had lots of really, really great results from like interacting with this work and witnessing like, wow, the things that kept us together over our marriage are all of these nuggets that my husband somehow kind of got eventually got to of how do we embody our own power as men? How do we hold a space of safety so that we can be in a, a relationship with a woman who knows to let go. Um, how do we create a connect intimately? So yeah, if you have a man in your life, you want to introduce to this work, um, doc, uh, alivepartner.com forward slash Kim. Mario created a really great video that has like these three power tools of how do you activate that chemistry with a woman that has her feel you, has her trust you, has her be able to let go so you can be in that masculine energy. And like the thing so many alpha men really want is like, I'm trusted, I'm getting it done. I am relied upon and a provider. Um, Heidi had asked, uh, this was a really powerful question too. Like what if there's a lot of pain in the relationship, I can't find it right now, but what if we've uh, had so much difficulty and so much painful energy in the relationship? You guys, everyone who goes into conscious embodiment, you're going to witness the pain that can be a part of the human experience. Like there can be a lot of sadness. If you love there's going to be even the fear of losing that love, or maybe there have been relation relationship, death losses. And there's, you feel that grief. If you open your heart to love anything that's still in the container, that's not processed. Someone died 10 years ago, but you just like, I'm just going to throw myself into the work and get distracted. That grief is still there. And when you go into a heart opening relationship, you're actually going to feel it. And so You'd be amazed that like, we've never had any trauma in our relationship, but when you open your heart, there may be pain, there may be grief, there may be sadness. And as you wake up and become alive, you breathe that out. It's not your natural state, but you know, life will bring things day by day, week by week, especially being parents, oh, so intense and full on. You're gonna feel things more intensely. You just have that open heart. So it moves through. So life is beautiful. Life is in flow. And you're sharing that with your partner versus like, let me process this on my own. Ooh, I wonder what he's going through, but sure if he's going to ever tell me. Um, you're actually connected with yourselves um, in, in, independently so you can be more connected with each other. So that video is a really, really powerful resource for any man who wants to be in his own divine power as a masculine individual with a woman and as a creator of his own life. So alivepartner.com 
forward slash Kim is where they have that video. If you want to introduce your partner, Mario does have a course. If you use the code Kim at checkout, you'll get 10% off of his course. If there's a, a man in your life or men who are watching this broadcast that are ready to delve into truly being alive in your life, taking full responsibility for your outcomes, full responsibility for your relationships. Mario's worked with men that didn't talk to their father for years, uh, didn't talk to his son for years, had estranged relationships that were really, really painful. And then it's like, I talked to my father. I'm having real conversations with this man who before it was just like facts and events. We're actually having real meaningful conversations and major, major changes in their relationships with women. So he has created this course. It's a five module course uh, specifically for men who, who are successful men, but really like, I'm just not feeling the love. How do I have the win with her? I was gonna. I want to. I was gonna say something, uh, Kim, if I may, uh, regarding Heidi's uh, question, which I think it's a beautiful question. Um, those people who are in relationships, as far as my beliefs and concerns go, they're very, very fortunate, even if there are a lot of challenges in their relationship. And the reason why I say that is, think of yourself as though you had a floaty. You know, one of those things to go on the beach and it was like a little donut and it's around your waist. And let's imagine that you also had really short arms and your partner has the same, you know, we're from different planets, short arms, and we have this thing stuck around our waists. Well, if you try to take it off yourself, okay, you can't. And you've tried every single possibility. But now when you actually have a partner near you, he can actually figure out his body to be able to get that little donut, that little floaty away from your body. I really believe that a lot of the traumas and a lot of the difficulties that happened, it's really the people coming together, having this little floaty against, you know, around us. And as we get close, we bump into each other and it creates all this friction and all this stuff. And we experience that as well. It's because I'm in this relationship. When in fact, you've had your own journey before you met the other person. And you, we don't have to really dive into every single thing and dissecting the Alive Partner course is not psychoanalysis, nothing like that. It's like, you know what? We are just going to create a completely different reality. We're going to take everything, all the greatness of who you are, and we're going to leverage all of that so you can actually gift it to yourself and gift it to your partner, whether you're a woman going through the Alive Partner course, which I recommend as well, or you're a man. And another thing that I think is essential about this man, which I mentioned earlier, is that this guy that I'm talking about doesn't like to do courses, blah, 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 read books about this stuff, independent of the woman. So when I was creating the course, I, I was very mindful about the fact that this, this is not what this kind of man gravitates to. And the feedback that we have received is that it's essentially it's like having a conversation and all of this awareness are floating in and suddenly by the end of watching a module, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like the whole sky just opened. So I, I think it's it's a whole different way of doing this. In fact, I had a somebody go through the course and said, for those of you who know uh, David Dida's work, and they said, uh, the person said that testimony was something like, you know, David Dida kind of like opened the door for men to actually, you know, the, the way of the superior man in that body of work to actually open the door for men to have that. And then a life corner has come two decades later and has knocked the door down for men to just rush in into the room. It was quite an honor to, to get that kind of visual from, you know, such work that has impacted so many men. And, and that's, that's really, to me, I, I think that there's a lot of hope because at the end of the day, for all of you women listening, men, we want to love you. We want to please you. We want to make love to you. We want to hold you. We want to care for you. We want to protect you. We just have to tweak some things so that you can experience us doing all of the things and then some. We have more questions. If we can take a few more minutes, uh, Mary is saying, what if you're continually open and express your feelings openly, but your husband's not willing to reciprocate and is unopened to open his heart and hold space for you. He becomes irritated. And it seems when I express an emote, it's very frustrating and actually makes our situation worse. Yeah, that's a great question. The first thing that I would want to know in that situation is, have the right conditions and stage been set up by the woman, in this case, you, Mary, 
for him to actually understand what's going on. Because like I said, there are a lot of preconceived notions and expectations that a developed woman places upon the man as to what he should be doing for her and as to what he should be doing for himself and is in his own expansion journey. And when those two boxes are not checked out, then the moment you approach the field to play the game, there's a lot of charge already. There is a set expectation in your body, in your essence. I am not going to be mad again. This is going to be more of the same. So I would absolutely and, and very humbly and kindly ask you to consider what I'm saying. How in your own you know, genius of the, the, the amazing woman and the ancient wisdom that lies within you as a woman, how can you tap into a different kind of communication? And... And just because you're a woman, it doesn't mean that you know how to actually express and have the language of emotions. That, that's a wrong assumption that many people make. And it's not necessarily true. Amongst women, there may be a common language, but, but you may not have a proper language to express emotions. And when you're talking to him, it may land for him as, as an accusatory tone. It may land as a judgmental sort of tone. And if we haven't really set the conditions and the container for this kind of communication to happen, it may be extremely difficult no matter how much intention of a good result you may have to actually have the outcome that you so desire. How does she set the container? What would you recommend she do to set the container for, because what comes to my mind is like how painful it is to be a sensing feeling being in the world with kids, with stuff. And to say like, oh my gosh, wow, there's so much fear or like, oh, I feel so much pain in my body. Yes. Can you hold space for me? Yes. And and that's obviously, that's not the expression itself of just like, oh, oh, grief coming out. But to set the container, what would you say? That's a great question. You know, I, I will be completely open on this one. As I've been in the other things. When I started doing some of the exercises that I talk about in the course with Kimberly, if I had a video to play to you guys, you would think pretty pretty horrible things of me as a man in the way that I was communicating with her. What I'm trying to say is I had a lot of emotions that I didn't know how to handle and how to voice them because I didn't have the language either. And when I did that, it hurt my woman deeply, tremendously, right? So it is essential to understand something. If you've been the one coming to him, Mary, to actually get your needs met when it comes to your emotional communication and being met by him, but he has never had in your relationship, and I guess, I guess he hasn't because you're saying that he's unable to open his heart. So you've never experienced him, or at least perhaps very seldom, you've experienced him as somebody who's been able to actually do that. So sometimes the counterintuitive thing is for you to receive what you're actually seeking for, he may have to experience him himself first. He may be the one who needs to actually open up and talk about what's coming up for him and for you to actually hold the space and be the container for him so that all of that gets released. And then there can be reciprocity because he's come to understand and feel what it does for somebody to be able to allow those things to come out. So and how would she initiate that? That's, that's a good question. So what I would do in that kind of case is I would approach him and I said, listen, the way that we have communicated in the past really hasn't worked for me. It has led to more conflict that we're not resolving. And I want to recognize that. Perhaps I've been the source of that. It doesn't matter. I'm here to create a different way to do it. And something that would really serve me so that I can enhance who I am as a woman for you is to also listen to you as I actually talk about the things that are coming up for me. Robert, I recognize that this is new to you. But you know what? Let's just give that a try. I would like to hear... How are you feeling? And it's, I can guarantee you that most men, if, if, we, if we're caught in a good moment, we are not going to actually say no to that. If you, want, if, you want, if you want to open up, that's possible. You have to hold the space. You see, I don't know how long you've been married for, but the fact of the matter is he doesn't have tools right now to be able to do that. And that's what a life partner does, you see. And that, that unleashing of his feelings, of his feeling body, starts to create a degree of comfort in him to be able to witness you as you're coming to share what's coming up for you. And that is the game changer. You see, that's why these questions are the reason why we've actually done this 25 years. Exactly. 
25 years of doing the same thing that hasn't worked. That's why I say in one of the videos, I do not want to spend a single day of my life knowing that these things are happening. People spending thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars every, you know, so many years going to therapy, marriage is about to break up when we know that it's because we can really address this and solve it. And that's, that's why the course is here. Thank you. Thank you. And I mean, this is, it's not that every relationship is a match for where the, you know, each partner wants to go. You have to kind of create together. What do we both want? She said he likes to lead, direct, and fix everything. Yes, that's an alpha male. That's an alpha male. I have, some, I have some news for you. If he has those three things, he is my guy. And guess what? There is hope for him to be able to do this. So this is actually great news because that means that he fits exactly the individual I'm speaking about. And that guy, at the end of the day, Mary, he's dying inside of himself to be able to give you, sweetheart, what is it that you actually wanted to experience from him? Guarantee you over and over and over again. Yep. This is a, a wonderful thing for people to realize because for any of us, our masculine energy can be like freaking amazing, magnificent, powerful, or it's shut down. And then it's like, I'm, I want to lead, but it's like, I'm bossy and I've got to tell everyone what to do. And I'm abrasive or arrogant. Like that's when it gets misdirected. So you got, it's a yes. And he wants to lead and, oh, I would love to be led. And, and what would it take for him to be even more in his wisdom and in his connection? So I like really trust this guy and I want to go where he's going. So every relationship isn't meant to be a conscious partnership. He, you may want to go where someone doesn't want to go. That's okay. I, I was in a relationship in the past and realized that this person doesn't actually really want an amazing, connected, authentic, um, divine partnership, like an authentic, we are reading each other's thoughts. We are um, feeling that much love. It was like, yeah, maybe. It wasn't the most important thing. Um, but I know so many people are ready for this, which is why I have Mario on today and we're talking about this, why he created this course to um, be a great resource for men. So um, do you have anything you want to say? We didn't touch on Mario. I've shared the link. So you want to view this yourself, women, because it will blow your mind of like, oh my gosh. And maybe you, you can ask for those specific things from your man, but for men to have this resource will absolutely change the world. Well, Do you have anything you want to add? I actually, thank you, Kim. I want to add the fact that for the people in Kim's community, and she's already given the link to the course, I'm going to do something really, really special. So we have a 10% discount on the course, which I think it's amazing. The course is became live to the world for the first time today in this Mind Body uh, TV episode. So thank you for the opportunity, Kim, to be able to share this. Uh, it humbles me and it's a privilege. Secondly, the first 10 people that sign up for the course will have a one hour Zoom consultation with me. And that's gonna be complimentary for the first 10 people who are action takers. The second thing that we're also doing is um, the first 100 people that sign up for the course, they're going to be receiving the five books that we reference in the course and we use in the book, which are, I mean, after over 25 years of being in the personal development industry and all the things that we have done together, Kim, I, I found that they're just so powerful for this topic. And it's the best that I can find to complement what I have actually put together. And you'll get those five books completely for free for the first 100 people that sign up. In addition to that, because I am so committed to seeing that this works. It's not just buying a course and goodbye, you know, have a good time with it. The five will be done. The course will be done in five weeks. And that's my commitment. In five weeks of going through the course diligently and doing exactly as prescribed, you will see 100% results on this, if not more. And, I, and I'm telling you because I'm putting everything that I have seen for 25 plus years and I know it works. And we already have had 30 something people that were on the beta testing phase of this. And it, it's just unbelievable the results that we had. On top of that, we're going to do two complimentary live calls for your community. 
on the front end of the course in the beginning so that we can answer questions and support the members that are actually starting to go through the course. And then we'll have a back end, another live call, Zoom call, so that we can all see each other and address the questions and celebrate all the different breakthroughs and so on. So we'll also offer that to your community members. And I am just so excited because it's it pains me as a man to see women suffering because of all the things we've talked about. And it pains me as a man to see fellow men who are really devoted to their relationships, wanting to do this, and they're not really being able to do it. And she's saying, can couples stay together? That is the ultimate. Thank you, Tammy. Because when you can actually be with your man in his journey of expansion and becoming that a life partner that you know it's possible for him, and you're learning how your man thinks and feels, you are both learning a whole new language for both that is going to change your relationship forever. So as, mo as much as it's geared to the men, like I said in the beginning, it's really for human beings. And those women that are smart like yourself, Tammy, that are saying, is this for us together? Can we do it? That is a meta level of understanding. Yes, because you're walking together. And that guy, like I said, he doesn't like to do courses and stuff like that. And there are exercises in the course that I guide with video. And there's also PDFs that accompany them that he will be inviting you as a woman to do them with him, right? Because obviously it, it, you know, we're building the foundation for this man from creating a language to eventually feeling, to being able to neutralize his emotions and be able to gift himself to you. So in order to do that, he needs to invoke your presence to do it. So you're spot on, Tammy, thank you. I want to address one other piece because Mary, who's been so engaged with this and has been a really great receiver asking questions, I guess I'm too much of an alpha female and that's where we clash. And I just want to say like, is that your organic state or is that your reactive protection, right? Because a lot of women are by nature more of the omega, a receiver, more sensual. Um, uh, they have more feminine energy and their natural state would be more of like uh, being the sensor feeler and having a strong alpha seer. So that's like the, the, the masculine feminine, like the masculine provider, I've got you covered. And that the woman can let go and it's a whole different experience. A lot of women from the wounded feminine are like, let me just shut down the sensory being and be in my alpha. I'm in control. I'm in charge. I'm driving the car. I'm not letting go. But their complaint is, oh, I can't believe like everybody's mooching off of me. They'll date guys who like don't have a job or <laughs> it's all I'm the primary money maker or um Oh, he never makes plans to take me out. I'm the one who always has to be in charge and assert. So you got to look, is he following your lead or is he actually a more of a omega male? He's not an alpha male. You've got to look at like, what's my actual nature? Because a lot of women think I'm an alpha woman and it's like, mm, not necessarily your intrinsic. That might be your default mechanism from a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. You also... If you are, if you do want an alpha male, uh, I, I got it together. I am here for you. I've got myself together. I'm a provider of space, so, uh, 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 strength. You can let go, right? You've got to be a better receiver and you've got to like, you could be an alpha every single other place in your life, but you're not going to do it over here. If, if I start telling Mario what to do, it's going to shut him down. He's not going to be in his full brilliance. I can trust like this guy's got it. Let me let go. And you either have someone you can trust or you don't. So you got to look for yourself of like, wait a minute, what do I actually want in my relationship? Because I can be alpha everywhere else in my life. But if I'm going to come home and be alpha, I'm going to be pissed as a woman. I'm going to eventually be resentful. I'm going to be crunchy. I'm going to be dried up. I'm not going to be having any fun. So you got to actually be honest with yourself. Like, what do I really want in my relationship? And I know you have a ton to say on that. And a lot of that that's in the course as well. But I'm sure you want to add to no, that's That's perfect, Mary. In this particular case, and for everybody who can identify with Mary, there's many women that when they have felt that they can't trust a the guy, they resort to strengthening their alpha nature. 
and now I'm the leader and now I'm taking care of everything because I don't trust this guy, right? So that only gets deeper and deeper ingrained in you over time. One of the things that we do in the course, and there's a module that is to discover what is your alpha omega spectrum. And that exercise is absolutely uber powerful because what happens is sometimes people may think I'm such an alpha and then they only discover that there's a lot of omega in them, right? So you may gain as a woman doing the Alive Partner course, Mary, incredible insights. You may be the one buying, let's say the Alive Partner course and doing the course and then suddenly saying to your husband, you got to watch this with me. Now suddenly he's kind of like, coming over to the sofa, you know, and sitting next to you to actually watch it. And suddenly he's the one sitting by himself watching the course as you're doing something else, right? You may be the igniter for something like that to happen. So these questions that you're having are addressed and supported through the course. Great, great question. Thank you so much for coming on. I know this is like maybe a little off topic for what we usually do with mind, body medicine, but our relationships and the energies, the masculine and feminine energies that course through our body are so foundational for our health. And relationships can either be a space of great opening, sharing, expression, which is essential for health. It's cathartic and healing. Or they can be the opposite. Like, <gasps> I'm tight when I'm around this person. or I've got to hold it together. And then we create relationship patterns that literally make us sick. So this is, you know... We've got to we've got to address this because everybody's in relationships yes. with with people. <laughs> so um, I, I really appreciate your feedback on this from everyone in the community. Share this with people you love. Definitely share this with the men in your life, whether it's a man you're in a partnership with or just men you care about. Like, whoa, these are really powerful resources for all of us to be more in our strength. Um, single men wanting to learn more about having a holistic understanding. Yes, absolutely. This is such a, because we all have like masculine and feminine energies in ourselves, but understanding the languaging and the communication, this will be a really powerful course for women as well. You know, I, 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 was, I was talking to somebody who did the course in uh, somebody in his 20s. And I was telling him when he was going through the course, I wish yeah. That somebody in my life would have been able to come to me and say, hey, you got to do this course. I really mean it because it would have saved us as, as a married couple. Oh, my God. As me being the source of the grief. Forget about Kim doing things that, that, that bother me. How about me just taking responsibility by being able to know what I was feeling, to know what was coming up for me? At the end of the day, I have to be in responsibility and accountable for myself and my feelings. That's part of you know, being an adult. It's part of growing, right? But there's a lot of children that are 40, 50, 60, 70 year old walking around with very undergraded and not upgraded POSs, right? Personal operating systems. And then they inflict a lot of pain on other people that are very sensitive, right? That have, you know, and, and this is such an important distinction, Kim. Well, and, and I want to get into a couple of the testimonials and stories we heard, but Janet is saying, how do we sign up? If you go to alivepartner.com forward slash Kim, scroll down and there's a link there where you register for the course. On that page is also the free video of like the three embodiments, the three things you can do to shift the energy in your relationship. The course is further down on that page. I was really moved when um, Andrew, who is my sweet nephew, my godchild, he's about to get married. And he shared, wow, after watching this first video in the course, I realized we all have these conflicts in my relationship. And sometimes like, wow, we're really good at conflict resolution and things just go smoothly. And sometimes it's a gridlock and it's a nightmare and it's days of like a cluster. And I saw in that first video how to create one versus the other, what I'm doing that's going down that road of the clustery, nightmarish, we can't get out of this. And this little thing just becomes this mess of conflict versus, oh, these are the things I can do that allow that to unwind. And I thought, oh my God, that is a million dollar nugget right there because, you know, he's moving forward into a, a marriage and uh, they have a beautiful relationship, but like who doesn't end up finding yourself in those like clustery things? And you're like, ah, 
and you don't realize all the stuff going on in your body that's creating that that you could easily shift to create something different. So um, that that was just one of the really powerful testimonials from these men. And then our friend Chris that said, wow, I never thought of my body as a giant receptor. You know, you think in your head, you figure stuff out for business, you get the answers. I never realized how to use my whole body as a receptor to get that intuitive hit, to get that clarity in, you know, in relationships and also in business. Do you want to please share some more of, I know what you've been experiencing. One of the things that I personally have not enjoyed in the, in a lot of courses that I have done or, or going to physical things is the following. And it's, um, you know, you have the speakers at the top of the stage and they're talking down and you're kind of like down there and just feeling so small as they're telling you all this knowledge. And I know so much more than you do. I really don't resonate with that style. Kim, I know you don't either, and that's not how you do your, your how you present yourself and, and the beautiful courses you have. And I've done the same thing because no man likes to be talked down like you don't know anything. Let me tell you something, buddy, how to do your life and how to treat, you know, treat your woman. So the course is not like that. It's really conversational in the modules, and it really comes from a place of honoring the men that I'm speaking to, just like me. There's no like, let me tell you how to do it. No. It's really coming from a place of honoring the greatness in every single man. The men who are part of this community are successful in their own right. And I think that is extremely pedantic, arrogant to treat them in such way. And I just don't resonate with that. And uh, so the feedback from the men going through it is like, you know, I didn't feel afraid that I was going to be doing this course. And, and I really felt welcome and embraced. And that to me was very important because I haven't experienced that in, in many courses that I've been to. And um, I, I think it's really important for men to feel, since we don't like and gravitate to, to those things, to really feel comfortable that this is possible for me. And I don't have this guy telling me this is how I, I need to do my life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> trauma. There's so much like trauma, drama we could just recreate in an unconscious partnership versus learning some really basic tools to create a conscious partnership. So I just want to say thank you for being here and sharing this with my community. Thank you for creating this work. And thank you for like being my partner, like caring enough about conscious partnership, about me, about yourself, about like having an awesome freaking life. Like our kids are benefiting from this. Our kids are, you can feel like their energy center is opening to be more conscious beings, more open to love. So thank you so much for all that you've done over the last years to say yes to your life and to love. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you for having me here. The honor is mine. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, everyone. I love you. Um, we are here for Mind Body TV every week on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time live in the Mind Body community, in Facebook, on YouTube, my YouTube channel. I'm at drkimd.com. You can subscribe there for more. We have lots of exciting things coming up. Um, and we'd love to hear from you as well. How did this touch your heart? What are your questions? Um, we are very vested in creating a more conscious, loving world. Lots of love. We have Mario's brother was here. Mario's sister has been here. It's so exciting. We have lots of friends that have come back. Best episode ever. <laughs> Thank you. We'll have more coming this year. Thank you. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Bye.